Today, we stand on the threshold of a new golden age of space exploration, the first of three missions that will see humans return to the moon for the first time in five decades. The SLS, or Space Launch System, today rests on the stand. Only one thing remains. The rocket is not yet ready to fly, and it may not lift off the planet for several more months. Frankly, it's hard to know how to feel about this rocket. Certainly, one cannot help but be awed by a rocket that is as tall as a U.S. football field is long. Designing, building, and testing such a large and complex machine represents a significant engineering achievement, but it's impossible to have a rational discussion about the Space Launch System rocket and its payload, the Orion spacecraft, without considering its enormous expense, ongoing delays, and looming obsolescence. One thing seems clear, the rollout does not mark the end of the beginning for this launch system. Rather, it's the beginning of the end. This is probably the last gasp of the Apollo era of NASA that has gripped the space agency for six decades. This is when NASA finally realizes that the SLS is too old and is in no condition to beat SpaceX and Elon Musk. More on this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Welcome back to the channel. We'd like to take this time to thank you for all of your support. Now let's get back to today's content. NASA's Artemis 1 moon rocket is staying at the launch pad, at least for now. NASA attempted to launch the EPIC mission on Saturday, September 3rd, but stood down when it couldn't troubleshoot a leak of super-cold liquid hydrogen propellant in time for liftoff. The leak occurred at a quick disconnect, an interface connecting the SLS core stage with a propellant line coming from the giant rocket's mobile launch tower. After analyzing the issue for a few days, the Artemis 1 team has decided to replace the seal on the misbehaving quick disconnect agency officials announced in an update on Tuesday evening, September 6th. Now, I must be frank. NASA's SLS hydrogen leak is a clear sign that the Artemis program's technology is way outdated. In fact, the latest delay is an indicator of the fact the space agency is relying on old technology that was originally designed for the space shuttle program. Many experts have even warned for years that the launch of the SLS will suffer from difficulties that plagued the shuttle program. Gee, I wonder why. SLS is literally and figuratively founded on the space shuttle legacy, which operated between 1981 and 2011. NASA has upgraded components of the shuttle for the new rocket, using a larger version of the shuttle stack that swaps out the legendary winged orbiter for either a cargo or crew capsule. The vehicle's core rocket stage is a stretched shuttle fuel tank powered by four shuttle main engines. During a news conference on Saturday, a journalist asked NASA Administrator Bill Nelson whether it was the right decision for NASA to continue working with hydrogen after the agency's experience with the space shuttle. In 2010, Nelson was a U.S. Senator from Florida and ringleader of the Space Authorization Bill alongside U.S. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison of Texas. We deferred to the experts, Nelson said. By this, Nelson meant that the Senate worked alongside some officials at NASA and within the industry to design the SLS rocket. These industry officials, who would continue to win lucrative contracts from NASA for their work on shuttle-related hardware, were only too happy to support the new rocket design. Among the idea's opponents was Lori Garver, who served as NASA's deputy administrator at the time. She said the decision to use space shuttle components for the agency's next-generation rocket seemed like a terrible idea, given the challenges of working with hydrogen demonstrated over the previous three decades. They took finicky, expensive programs that couldn't fly very often, stacked them together differently, and said, now all of a sudden it's going to be cheap and easy, she said. Yeah, we've flown them before, but they've proven to be problematic and challenging. This is one of the things that boggled my mind. What about it was going to change? I attribute it to this sort of groupthink, the contractors, and the self-licking ice cream cone. Over its lifetime, the shuttle on average scrubbed nearly once every launch attempt. Some shuttle flights scrubbed as many as five times before finally lifting off. 
For launch controllers, it never really got a whole lot easier to manage the space shuttle's complex fueling process, and hydrogen was frequently a culprit. And now, NASA faces the challenge of managing this finicky hardware through more inspections and tests after so many already. Effectively, Saturday's launch attempt was the sixth time NASA has tried to completely fuel the first and second stages of the rocket and then get deep into the countdown. To date, it has not succeeded with any of these fueling tests, known as wet dress rehearsals. We would certainly feel more forgiving for the SLS if the cost to develop and operate SLS were not so high, <sighs> but even it imperils the entire deep space flight program. As NASA moves forward, it must accelerate these efforts to make Artemis programs more affordable. Inspector General Paul Martin, who acts as the federal watchdog over the space agency, said, Otherwise, relying on such an expensive single-use rocket system will, in our judgment, inhibit, if not derail, NASA's ability to sustain its long-term human exploration goals to the Moon and Mars. Though NASA has yet to detail its spending plan for the entire life cycle of the program, I wonder why, the watchdog the watchdog estimated the initial four missions will cost about 4.1 billion US dollars each, the first of which is an uncrewed test that could happen this spring or summer. Well, we're already in the summer, so yeah, anyway. For perspective, that's about one-fifth of the entire NASA budget. Roughly half of the expense is the new rocket system. By 2025, the agency will have spent about 93 billion US dollars on Artemis, Martin said. Those are sobering figures as the commercial space industry shows it could likely do the job cheaper. SpaceX's Starship rocket, although still a prototype, is designed to be reusable, will carry heavy loads, and has the potential to launch more often than the single-use SLS rocket. The United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket under development also might offer an alternative with a cheaper bottom line. And to repeat what I've said earlier from Paul Martin, relying on such an expensive single-use rocket system will inhibit, if not derail, NASA's ability to sustain its long-term human exploration goals to the Moon and Mars. The cost per launch does seem high, said Peter Beck, CEO of the commercial space company Rocket Lab, in an interview with Mashable. I know what I could do for 4.1 billion US dollars, and it's a lot. The SLS could cripple the agency's human space exploration program if the rocket isn't scrubbed. Yet, despite its problems, the rocket isn't going anywhere. Because if nothing else, the elephant was born a political animal. That is a key difference between the SLS and SpaceX's Starship, which isn't tethered to decades-old technology or inefficient contracts. SpaceX has proven that the United States does have other transportation options. Their American broomstick! For the next rocket, Elon Musk announced he believed Starship could fly orbital missions for under 10 million US dollars per launch in as little as two or three years. If this is true, that would be several orders of magnitude cheaper than the SLS. It would be a classic case of commitment bias for the United States to stick to its guns because of the time and money already invested into SLS. This is like throwing good money out the window rather than cutting one's losses and going with the better option. At this point, there is no reason to believe legislators have lost the political will for the endeavor of their beast of a rocket apropos of the program's namesake, Artemis, the Greek goddess of wild animals. Let me know what you think about the SLS program right now in the comment section down below. Do you agree or do you disagree and why? Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed it, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already and ring that bell so you can stay up to date on when we upload new videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching. From all of us here at Alpha Tech, we hope to see you again next time.